بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Today inshallah we are going to start with the first chapter of this course which is the course of human computer interaction CS 464 inshallah the first chapter is titled usability of interactive systems First of all, let's list the topics that we are going to discuss today. The first, we are going to introduce the concept of human con computer interaction and of the usability of interactive systems. Then we will move towards the usability goals and measures, usability motivations, and we are going to conclude with the goals for our profession. First, the introduction. The user interface designers with the concept of human computer interaction in mind has turned the, our personal computers into today's widely successful smartphones by enabling users to communicate and collaborate in remarkable ways. Traditionally, the computing devices in general used to focus more on the technical issues, on the broad functionality that lead to the targeted, targeted outcomes of those machines or computers, any electronic devices. But through the history of usage of these devices it turns or it has been risen that there is a need to take the human needs the human factors the user requirements into consideration in order to make the usage and utilization of these devices simpler with less frequency of mistakes and hence more efficiently so as you can realize nowadays that the applications that we are using are not only used by professionals for jobs only for work for official tasks but they tend nowadays to be more emerged into the normal global human lives so the, thereby the applications that we are using nowadays in our smartphones or in any other smart devices we conduct businesses communicate with families acquaintances friends we get medical advices we uh, conduct even financial transactions, we do shopping, we uh, even uh, learn through them as we are doing nowadays by online learning and much more other benefits or usages of the applications. Therefore, it, it is clear that, it is clear that there is a dramatic shift in our usage of those applications and devices in general that it is highly recommended that they take our human needs into consideration in order to get the user satisfaction as we will see throughout this course inshallah so user satisfaction is very important in order to retain the interest of a user to complete and continue using these applications so researchers scientific researchers created an interdisciplinary design science of human computer interaction that does not only contain or comprise of IT or software developers but also 
there are psychologists, educational experts, instructional art and graphic designers, technical writers, ergonomic experts, anthropologists and sociologists, and much more. So as we will see on this course that we are not going to talk only about the technical aspects or the software, the programming aspects, but also about other aspects that are related to physical, psychological, ergonomical, societal aspects of humans in general. So at the individual or user level, the effective user experiences change people lives through different things. For example, routine processes, decision support, education and training, leisure, user-generated content, internet-enabled devices, and much more. You can think about many various examples about each one of these. Like decision support, like a doctor can make more accurate diagnosis and treatments if he was provided or he is provided by a device or applications that has taken the human factors into consideration and makes it much more easier for him to focus and concentrate more on the decision and diagnosis that he is thinking about, that he is evaluating, rather than thinking about other things that are irrelative to his decision. Like he is trying to avoid making uh, mistakes, he is trying to avoid pressing exit button by mistake. Why? Because it is poorly de uh, designed and the exit button is put or located very close to the enter, for example, button that he is pressing frequently. So he is trying now to focus or concentrate, be distracted by the exit button that it is very close to the enter, for example, button. Okay? We have the thinking about the user generated content as another example. We have social networking websites, photos, videos, share, and user communities that try to be designed to first to reduce the cognitive load, memory load of users, that there will be like uh, intelligence artificial intelligence that is designed to collect the interest data about the user and provide them with only those sites or services that are of his or her interest. That may save much time that can be saved for other crucial issues. Thinking about the societal or community level. We are using uh, them for, or we need human-computer interaction aspects or human factors or usability in general while we are doing our business need. Like financial planning, publishing applications, we need them on our professions and industries for family use or entertainment, for globalization, cultural exchange, and so on. So all these, if they are designed rigidly, in a rigid way that is inflexible, without taking the usability concept into consideration, they will be of less benefit So the st steadily 
dramatic growth in interest in human factor interactions stems from the designer's desire first to improve the user experience and you may find this concept in some websites or some books some researches as an acronym UX user experience so the designers the human computer interaction designers aim to improve the user experience while using specific application or the applica applications that they design the, the there is the other reason for the interest in human computer interaction is the rapid and widespread adoption of mobile devices or smartphones tablets tablets game consoles fitness trackers collaborative applications and so on so as they permeate our lives so there is a dire need for them to be designed in a usable way that supports or augments the user convenience makes the application user friendly and thus let the users continue using them rather than abandoning them after a short time so nowadays smartphones have high quality displays provide fast internet connections or facilitate it has many sensors that can augment the user experience and support a large number of applications let's take some examples we have here at the left here we have Google now that is used to call Google now or Google assistant for example and other naming for for it, it is now for our design for searching purposes reviewing notification cards and speaking commands so to make the lives of the users easier so instead of pressing the monitor or the display of the device or the, or the power button button then enter the pattern or password or any authentication step and then go and open the application of Google now or Google assistant or Google in general or any other application and then enter whatever you would like to search for Google now is designed to take the commands from the user the speaking commands sound voice commands direct by for example saying hey Google and then stating the name of the application that you would like to open and what you would like to do with it search for so and so set an alarm at 10 a.m. and so on okay so you can see here how easier the usage of this application is made in the right here for example we have a Twitter feed that is designed to be under each other that is linked by a key word for example or keywords in general again that is making the usage or the research process or search process sorry much more easier so millions of people take advantage of the World Wide Web WWW for education cultural purposes so as we are having access to almost everything we need to be more efficient to or while using them for example in this website in, on Mac 
Oh, it's showing Picasa for photo browsing and Google Maps in a browser. You can see how they can work together. The bottom of the screen also shows the dock, a menu of frequently accessed items to make it easier for the, the user to select from if the website that he is going to is one of them. There's a high percentage, for example, or a specific percentage that what the user is looking for now is one of the frequently accessed items or locations that he used to go or he used to buy, he used to use. So in this way, the time of searching for this content will be reduced, usually will be reduced drastically and thus the satisfaction of the user will be increased. We can see here that in the Amazon website that the books that is of interest of the user based on the user's personal history with this website or with even with other book publishers websites that are stored during the user experience with the, those sort of websites will have a list of recommendations based on the user interest that will make his time and his search more effective than if he is going to search for the product or the book or any other item from scratch. If these things are designed poorly, sometimes their effect will be adverse, will be negative, if it is designed poorly. So instead of recommending things that actually or really interest me, they will recommend things that are relative to them and will waste time for me to get rid of them and then look for what I am lo looking for. But if they are designed intelligently in a smart way and efficient way, no, they will may reduce my efforts and time and resources consumption to look for these things and thus will increase my satisfaction. The same thing is with YouTube, for example. We have many we have many options, for example, other than the recommendations of specific clips or videos, we have other options, for example, that are adjustable based on the user needs or user requirements. He can l use it as a full screen, as a large, as a wide one, uh, uh, etc. He can use it with related or display it with re related videos or without them and so on. He can even have the option to select uh, the quality of the, the display, either high quality or medium or less, based on his size, for example, in convenience and comfort, and or based on his uh, uh, internet and data plan, based on uh, his speed requirement that he would like to follow this video based on, he can change even the speed of that video and so on. So the researchers in general are studying how social media are changing education, family life, shopping, and other services, other sensitive services such as medical care, financial advice, and political organizations. So as you can imagine that the user experience is very crucial, very important. 
as it is also dealing with issues of organizational impacts, job redesign, distribution of tasks between the teamwork, even the face-to-face -face interaction if it involves the need for screen interaction or intermediary applications between them either it, it can be augmented or virtual it has to be simulating the reality so when the plasticity plasticity like flexibility of the design provides smooth conversion across different display sizes different consumers take pleasure it is a challenge here the software the application the system should be plastic enough flexible enough to be able to be transformed between different displays different user requirements without compromising the quality or the features that it is supposed to provide when conversions are difficult consumers take notice and then may abandon using it or abandon purchasing or renewing the license of that application so the loss or money loss or other losses will be endured or may be endured in education here we have another example that augment the education purpose by providing wearable things to convey a specific information or learning concepts to the students other children or any other so as we can see here that the usability or the human, human computer interaction in general and usability particularly is very crucial while designing systems but how or how can we measure this concept the usability concepts and what's its goals so let's differentiate here between successful designers and great designers so we have designers software designers or hardware driven designers we have like for one we are not going to think about them but we have two good type of designers that are considered good not bad so one of them is successful and the other one is great let's talk about the successful one let's think about it that it is the one that is providing the basic the limit the basic limit the basic standards of the design requires so it go beyond the vague general broad notion and idea of user friendliness intuitive and natural doing more than simply making checklists or subjective guidelines so it is not just thinking about that specific application or interface in general any, any interface either logical or physical interface it shouldn't be only friendly without serving the purpose or even of providing something more than the basic of the baseline features some standards or guidelines here and there provide like a checklist the like for example is the uh, exit button clear or there yes so it's a check if is the user able to uh, re or undo his action 
yes or no so yes it is okay so th it is good in one way but it is not the the best the optimal goal that should be aimed at okay so having a thorough understanding of the diverse community of users and the tasks that must be accomplished the successful designer study evidence-based guidelines and pursue the research literature when necessary okay so this is what can we consider as uh, successful designers but what about what about the great designers the best designers they are those that are deeply committed to enhancing the user experience so they are not only providing the basic the baseline features but enhancing improving the user experience which strengthen their resolve when they face difficult choices time pressure and tight budgets and they are aware of the importance of eliciting emotional responses attracting attention with animations and playfully surprising users okay so in order to like be or to aim for or being a great designer there is some things that you have to do to ascertain the user's needs like by determining what tasks and some tasks must be carried out include tasks which are only performed occasionally rarely from time to time and common tasks tasks that are easy to identify the functionality also must match need or else users will reject or underutilize the product this is what we are caring about we need to sus satisfy the user in order not to let him reject or abandoning utilizing this product or this application this item so to ensure reliability we need to have actions must function as specified so based on the user requirements that we as the designers or developers we are going to collect from the end users they need some specific functionalities of this product so we need to make sure that they function exactly or at the minimum as they specified so the databases must reflect the actual database the reports that are going to be displayed to the user should be or should reflect the reality should satisfy the user's sense of mistrust the system must not introduce errors some poorly designed products or systems are introducing errors by themselves without any intervention or action of the user this is very annoying or it might be very annoying to the user and when he is or she is bothered by these errors or pop-ups even this may, may lead them not to use the product the system should be available as often as possible or it should be available 
when the user needs it. So it also ensures the user's privacy and data security here by protecting against unwarranted access, unauthorized access, destruction or unauthorized modification of data and malicious tampering. So these six things should be taken carefully into consideration to ensure the reliability of the software or hardware or any product. Okay. So another goal of the usability is to promote standardization, integration, consistency, and portability. With regard to the standardization, we have different standards that can be or must be followed to aid learning and avoid errors such as W3C and ISO 9241 standards. With regard to integration, the product should be able to run across different software tools and packages. The, th there should be a high level of portability that the system is portable and can uh, be used across different operating operating systems or uh, different platforms, different devices and so on. The more operating systems, platforms, devices, the, the, the product can operate on, the more usable it is. The consistency. Consistency is one of the most important features that we need to strive to to ensure usability the compatibility compatibility across different products versions the same features should be done in the same way same methods across different versions or different platforms generating a report in one platform or one version should be following the same steps to generate the same report on the other version or other platform. So there should be a use of common action sequences, terms, units, colors, etc. within the program. We shouldn't have the same product in one platform with a coloring, a specific coloring convention for example, and a completely different one on the different platform. The portability allow for the user to convert data across multiple software and hardware environments. It is very similar to the integration here. So these are the goals that we have talked about. What about the measures? How can we measure the level of the usability that we are having? We have five human factors that are central to community evaluation. We have five human factors measures. First one is how the time to learn, the time needed to learn doing specific tasks, for example. How long does it take for typical members, typical users, to learn how to use the actions relevant to a set of tasks? This can be measured by giving a specific task, task or tasks, to the user and or different users and ask them to conduct, to carry out these tasks. The less time needed to complete them, the more usable the system is. The second measure is time or time needed or speed for of performance. Time needed for performance or speed of performance. 
how long does it take to carry out the benchmark task? Okay, we know that the ordinary user should complete a specific task in a sp a sp an, an allotted or specified amount of time. Does this the same for this group of users or not? Okay, so the first one is the time to learn. The second one, the time to perform. Okay, the user has learned how to use, how to carry out a specific task. But how long he will take to carry it in reality or on the daily basis? Okay, the third one is the rate of errors. How many and what kind of errors do people make in carrying out the benchmark tasks? Although time to make and correct errors might be incorporated into the speed of performance, the error handling in such a critical component of interface usage, that it deserves extensive study. The fourth one is the retention over time. Retention over time. How well do users maintain their knowledge after an hour, a day, or a week? Will they forget about it? How to do a specific task? I need to read the catalog or instructions or guidelines every time or after one week, two weeks, a month, and so. So retention, the continuous use, may be linked closely to time to learn and frequency of use may place may plays an important role the fifth one is the subjective satisfaction how much did users like using various aspects of interface so about like liking liking something being satisfied while using something. Some people may use a specific product, but they are forced to use it because they don't have others, or this is the only, uh, the only product on their, uh, on their organization, or that on the only application that is provided by their government, and so on. So how much did users like using various aspects of this interface? The answer can be ascertained by interviews or by written surveys that include satisfaction scale, like Likert scale, from strongly or highly agree uh, to strongly disagree, and space for free form comments in order to allow users to write their comments. So the trade-off concept here, these measures that we, we have talked about now and the goals, in order to be realistic, it is difficult to meet all of them together with the highest standards. So, so there should be like a way of trade-off of balance between them during our design. So trade-offs here in design options frequently occur. For example, when doing or carrying out change to the interface in a new version may create consistency problems with the previous versions. So we need to think that do these changes may improve the interface or they are with the same level so we should or we are we should keep the previous version 
of that interface or it introduced new needed functionality so we compromised the consistency here for the sake of the new functionality we need to take a trade of design decision while we are designing alternatives design alternatives can be evaluated by designers and users via mockups or high fidelity prototype that is very close to the real product but will give us a perception about how this product will work on reality so the basic trade-off is getting feedback early and perhaps less expensively in the development process versus having a more authentic interfa interface evaluated so this may save the designers and evaluators time instead of waiting until we have the final product okay moving towards the usability motivation that we have mentioned some of them throughout the previous slides a very strong motivation for usability quality come from high functioning professionals who demand excellence in environments such as life, a life critical our life critical systems, industrial plants, legal offices, and police agencies. In your free time or while you are studying this chapter, go to this YouTube clip and see how important is the usability to reach the excellence of critical systems like what you will see here so in addition the spirit of usability excellence is also expected by users of exploratory creative and collaborative interfaces as well as uh, diverse socio-technical systems With regard to consumer electronics, e-commerce, and social media, user experience designers are providing effective and satisfying designs that have become widely adopted for personal communications, education, healthcare, and much more. So two main aspects here, effectiveness and satisfaction. Achieving both of these will lead us to a more depth concept which is efficiency okay the consumer electronics improved family communication healthcare businesses and wider access to education the e-commerce and social media have become part of a daily life for many users because of its ease to learn and use and because of of its low error rates if users cannot succeed quickly they will give up and try a competing supplier so if we are striving to retain our customers our market share we need to satisfy our users the second one in the field or in the area of games and entertainment of entertainment applications many entertainment applications and many games nowadays that it is not only used for a purely entertaining gaming purposes but even for other goals other objectives like for education, for sport purposes, sport aid purposes, for rehabilitation even, for addiction of other, like drugs for example, and other things. So they can be used for other purposes. So that's why they are important to be designed with these things in mind, with the user experience and usability in mind. 
So we have one approach here is to use a layered or level structure design to facilitate a graceful evolution from novice to expert usage, from beginner to expert user. For example, users can move to higher layers when they need additional features or have time to learn them. Another approach here while designing with the usability in mind is to winning novice users is to carefully trim the features to make a simple device or application so users can get started easily. And maybe later on we can consider promoting them to higher levels with more complicated or complex features that may need time to learn but when, once they have got used to the beginners, the novice, novice level, it will be much more easier for them to go for high, a higher level. For the professional environments, many interfaces are poorly designed and this is true across domains. And if you close your eyes and think about poorly designed products, you may think or you may see our list, a long list about this, about this. Some of them are related to life critical systems, related to air traffic, nuclear reactors, and other things, medical equipment. And others are not related to life critical systems, but they are expensive. They have high cost. So they have to be, to or to have high reliability and usability as well. It may need or endure lengthy training periods, which is sometimes access acceptable in some critical and sensitive systems, but not all systems. Some other systems, like the financial services, should be aiming at error-free performance as the errors sometimes are very expensive. Sometimes there is subjective satisfaction, which is this an issue due to well-motivated users. Sometimes because I like to play this type of game, regardless of its design, I may use it. But the HCI designers shouldn't rely on this aspect. These are some examples about life critical applications. You can go through them to see the features that are put in place to enhance the user experience. So the industrial and commercial uses, like banking, insurance, management, reservation, billing, usually they should have ease of learning. Because it is very important to reduce their training cost. Speed and error rates are relative to cost as well. Speed of performance is important, as we said a few slides earlier, because of the number of transactions and the sensitivity even of those transactions. In the office, home and entertainment applications, again, the ease of learning is very important. Low error rates, it might be acceptable to have some errors here and there, but it depends on the size of the error and on the cons consequences of the error. The infrequent use of some applications means interfaces must be intuitive and easy to use online. Help is important as well. Choosing functionality is difficult because the population has a wide range of both novice and expert users. So we should take into consideration both of them as if we design our system to be very basic this will not maybe entertain 
or attract the expert users. But if, on the other hand, we design the system to be to be very complicated, very complex, it might be like distracting for novice users and they will not use it well so we have to hold the stick from the middle competition causes the need for low cost new games and gaming devices should consider having new appealing features as well in the it is the same thing in the exploratory creative and cooperative systems as we saw during the COVID-19 pandem pandemic that while we're trying to conduct our official meetings or even training courses, we strive to make comparisons between different online meeting products or online collaborative systems based on the ease of use, based on the features that they are providing to enhance the user experience. So with these applications, the computer should be transparent so that the user can be absorbed in their task domain. This is an example. You can go through it on your time. In the societal technical system, the same concepts. There is a growing domain for usability in the social systems that involve many people over a long time period. And we have our social social applications are as are considered as examples here. So interfaces of these systems often created by governmental organizations. Thus, trust, privacy, responsibility, and security are issues, are very important, are very crucial. Verifiable sources and status feedback are important. Ease of learning for novices and feedback to build trust is very crucial. So administrators need tools to detect unusual pattern of usage. It shouldn't rely only on the manual detection, but there should be a way that is intelligent enough and that is well informed that will aid the administrators to detect unusual patterns of usage and thus intrusions. Let's conclude this chapter with the goals for our proficiency. Our proficiency as computer scientists say, or as human computer interaction specialists. So, influencing academic and business researchers here within computer science and information studies, there is a growing awareness of the need for greater attention to usability. There are many fruitful directions for research, such as reducing anxiety and fear of computer usage. For example, resist using email and engaging in e-commerce because users are anxious about making mistakes or privacy violations. Graceful evolution, like when novices, beginners, have few features and wish to move up to more powerful facilities. The transition has to be smooth, to be flexible by adding error messages, online assistance, and information feedback. There are many other fruitful directions for research as well, like social media participation, raising quality of what is produced in social media. Input devices provide ex experimentations of multi-touch screens voice gestures information explorations users will want to filter select and restructure their information rapidly with minimum effort uh, 
another goal here with regard to providing tools, techniques, and knowledge for commercial designers. There is rapid prototyping features that should be enabled to be produced as easy. So when using contemporary tools, it will be easier to evaluate them and conduct experiments before going to the full functioning product and realizing the errors or mistakes very late. So use general or self-determined guidelines, documents written for specific audiences to refine system. Use feedback from individuals or groups of users in order to improve the functionalities of our tools. The third one, third goal here for our profession is raising the user interface consciousness, consciousness of general public. Some novice users are fearful due to experience with poor product design. So good design helps novices through these fears by being clear, competent, and non-threatening. So we have come to the end of this chapter, and as you can see, that we introduced the concept of usability of interactive systems. We have stated the main goals of usability and how to measure them. We stated some motivations of usability, and at the end we concluded with some goals for HCI professionals that we need to consider. Thank you very much for your listening.